by the time you see this video, it'll be old news that the United States of America has a new president. But it will be new news for some and how to respond to the presidency of the United States of America. And more specifically, how to pray for the president. And some might be asking the question, even begging it, Preacher, I didn't vote for this man. I didn't vote for this man or woman to be the president or the vice president of the United States. Therefore, I don't have to pray for them. Contrary to the word of God, you say that. Because God's word says we are to pray for those who are in authority. And I'm here to remind you, to encourage you, to show you from God's word, just as I encourage you to pray for our last president and the president before him and all the presidents before them since I became a Christian and I began to read my Bible and I began to understand that God wanted me to pray for those who were in authority, whether I voted for them or not, whether they were in my political persuasion or not, that the government of the United States has those who are in authority, but there is an authority even above our president of the United States. And yes, he is our president. If you are a citizen in the United States of America, Joe Biden is your president, and Vice President Harris is his mate, running mate, and serves in the presidency and the executive branch with him, and she is our vice president also. And I want to remind you that God who turns the rivers and the streams in the direction that he wants them to go also turns the hearts of men toward him if he wants and desires. And God is still sovereign and God is still in control. And I understand there are those out there who are rejoicing for our new president and those who are really sad about our new president. And I'm not stupid. I'm not dumb. I haven't been hiding under a rock. I know the division in our United States of America. And I believe this is one of the reasons that at all times, regardless of who the president is, God wants us to uh, pray for them, whether we voted for them or not. And I get that from Scripture. That's what I always try to do with you. I try to reason from the scriptures with you. I try to find out what God has to say about something, and then I try to relate that. Do I get it 100% all the time? No, I don't. I'm still human. I'm still growing in the faith. But of this, I'm pretty certain. And that's from 1 Timothy chapter 2, in beginning in verse 1, where it says, I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men except the current president of the United States if you didn't vote for it. <laughs> no, that's not what it says. It says that we pray for, that we come before God with supplications, with our petitions and prayers and interceding on his or her behalf and do that for all men. And he goes on to designate in verse 2 and following exactly what all men, especially, he wants us to be praying for. He says, for kings and for all that are in authority. And here's the reason that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of of the truth. Did you hear that? God wants us to pray for all men. Again, we live under government, a government here on this earth. And even Jesus said, render under Caesar those things that are Caesar, render unto God those things that are God. And we as Christians know that ultimately all things belong to God, even Caesar, even kings, even presidents, all the way down to the dog catcher in our local community. God is sovereign over all. And you may be really, really happy. I read somebody's post on Facebook saying, this is the happiest, happiest day of my life in response to Joe Biden being elected president. And then I read somebody's uh, post who said the exact opposite 
saying it was uh, not only <laughs> the worst day for the United States or for them, but it's the worst day for the United States. So I understand the two spectrums, the two different extremes, and I want to caution you on both of them. Don't be so happy that you forget that uh, Joe Biden or Donald Trump or Obama or uh, the Bushes or any who, who serve as president are still human beings and they need God's intervention. And we can help with that by praying for them, lifting them up in our prayers, interceding on their behalf. And I want to caution you that if you think that uh, uh, America is going to hell in a handbasket because who the current president is, and you know, I can preach this sermon for any presidency because uh, there are going to be those who like the current president and don't like the current president. But the Bible says, regardless if we voted for him, Republican, Democrat, or whatever political party, we are to pray for those who in authority so that we might live peaceful and quiet lives. God can even take a crooked stick and hit a straight lick, if you will. If he couldn't, then I wouldn't be preaching and any other preacher wouldn't be preaching and then no man would be able to lead uh, in a, from a position of authority. You see, God intervenes. You know, sometimes I'm not going to pray for this president because he's, he's unjust or he's not right. Oh, so the, your candidate was and he's perfect and he's right? No, all the candidates and all those who are serving currently positions and those who are uh, also have left office and have served. They need our continued prayers. And so somebody says, well, how should we pray for them? Well, listen to what the scripture says. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. And then just right back up in verse 2, he ends it, that we might live a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. Pray for the godliness and the honesty of our president. Pray for him like you would pray for somebody else or that you would want somebody to pray for you. You would pray for their well-being and protection. I hope that when you pray for me and that when I pray for you, I remember, Lord, protect this person. There's so many things and people out there that want to harm us. Lord, protect them, protect their spouses, protect their family. Lord, provide for them. And as we serve in those positions of authority and leadership, oh God, give us your mind that we might lead in all godliness and honesty. Now, I know there are different definitions for godliness out there, but listen, there's not but one God, and that one God gives us His definition of godliness from His Word, the Holy Bible. And that's why we need to pray that the president will get into the word the word will get into him and he will be protected from evil influences now who's evil uh, because the present president is a democrat and it means that all the republicans are evil would you say that if it was the other way around would you say if the uh, former president who was republican uh, was righteous then all the democrats are evil you know no there's evil in the world and he'll use a republican and he'll use a democrat uh, that is, old Satan will, to carry out his will. But God can also use a Democrat and a Republican or whoever if he's searching for him and seeking, to, seeking him and submitting to his will. And that's given to us in the Word of God. Pray that he will lead in godliness and in honesty so that we might experience a quiet and quiet and peaceful life in all goodness and in all honesty because really there is no quiet or peace, peaceful life outside of the godliness and honesty of the Lord Jesus Christ as revealed in this word. So pray that the word will get to the White House. Pray that the word will get to the Congress. Pray that the word will get to our uh, legislative not only a legislative and executive branch but our judicial branches that all men in all authority will know the word of god and abide by the word of god and ultimately that god will have all men to be saved this will present a situation that people will come to know god 
or the knowledge of God and the truth of God, because God desires all men to be saved. For this is a faithful saying, Timothy will repeat over in his books, First and Second Timothy, that God came into the world in one of those uh, repetitions of this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation, that God came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief, said Paul as he wrote to Timothy, First and Second Timothy. Not that Timothy wrote First and Second Timothy, but Paul wrote to Timothy. So we need to pray. And we need to pray for his leadership. And here's the thing. You know, why wouldn't you pray for him? Well, he's not my president. I don't trust him. Well, shouldn't that be even more reason for you to pray for him? If your if the way of thinking is the right way of thinking, pray God, bring him around to the right way of thinking. And don't pray, say, God, take up his side. No, pray, God, you take over. It's not God's choosing up sides to be a Republican or Democrat. He wouldn't lower himself like that. No, God's not come to take sides. God has come to take over. And he'll take over a wayward Republican. He'll take over a wayward Democrat. Or he'll use a Republican or Democrat or whoever's in leadership that's seeking his face to be a blessing uh, to those who he leads and you know the United States needs to be blessed we we need to come together not in unrighteousness I'm not saying that we need to come together in all godliness and in truth and in righteousness and godliness and truth comes from this word so pray for our president pray for our vice president oh they're not perfect <laughs> no they're not and you know what when you pray for them, you're going to be an imperfect person praying for an imperfect person. But we're praying to a perfect, sovereign, holy, righteous God whose grace is able and His love is capable of covering a multitude of sins. And it begins with us living our lives in a way that's pleasing to God. So at first, He can hear our prayers and there's no interference between between us and the one that we are petitioned because of our sin so get right yourself and be right with god live a life of godliness and repent and turn from your sin trust god so that he might hear our prayers as we intercede on behalf of our president that he might lead and that he might lead a righteous uh, administration you think it's impossible well if you're saved a lot of people thought it was impossible for you to be saved. Did you know that? A lot of people thought it would be impossible for me to be saved. And even preaching. But God, again, can hit a straight lick with a crooked stick. And if he couldn't, he wouldn't be hitting it all. Because we're all crooked sticks. But the grace of God is what straightens us out. And so pray for our president. Don't be so down that you don't have any faith. And don't be so up that you don't need any faith. We need faith in God to govern and lead and guide our leaders and that He can and that He will when we lift them up in prayer. So would you join me at this time to pray for our president and our vice president, the new administration, and pray for our United States of America and all those who are in leadership. Father, we do come to you in the strong name of Jesus upon whose shoulders rests the government forever and ever and ever, for unto him there is no end in his ruling and his sovereignty. And we know that you ruled in the lives of men, Lord. As Daniel said in chapter 2, Lord, you raise up kings and you put down kings. You're in control. Nothing's taking you by surprise. And Lord, for those who are really ecstatic about our new leadership, and those who are really uh, disappointed about our new leadership, I pray, Lord, you could help us both to see that you're sovereign and that we need to look to you in intervening and uh, interceding in the lives of those who are leading us. And we especially pray for our President Biden and our Vice President Harris, Lord. Would you bless them both? that we might live quiet and peaceful, peaceable lives, Lord. Peaceful lives. And that, Lord, you would lead them 
in all godliness and truth from thy word. Surround them, Lord, with your people, Lord. And we pray that you would bind the wicked from them, Lord, that you raise up a wall of protection around them and keep out the evil one and his evil minions, Lord. And help us, Lord, to be on your side and not asking you to be on our side. For, Lord, you've come to take over, not sides. And, Lord, we understand that we need to be in the center of your will. We pray for our United States of America, each and every one, Lord. You love everyone, Lord. You died for all the world, Lord, in sending your Son, the Lord Jesus, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That includes those who live in and are citizens of these United States. And, Father, we thank you that we always have one that we can look to beyond and above our human leadership and know that, Lord, you love us with an everlasting love. And, Father, you're still in control and you're still blessing and you're still looking to bless those whose hearts are perfect toward you. For your word says, your eyes go to and fro throughout the whole earth seeking those whose hearts are set toward you who are perfect toward you. We pray that for our presidency, the executive branch. We pray it, Lord, for the legislative branch. We pray it for the judicial branch. We pray it, Lord, for all our leaders, even down, Lord, to the mothers and daddies in our homes, some of them single mamas, some of them single daddies. Lord, bless them in their role of leadership. And we pray and ask it in Jesus' name, who submitted to do your will, even humbling himself to the cross as he died as a man and yet Lord you raised him up on the third day exalting him that every knee might bow and every tongue confess that he Jesus Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords Father we pray this and ask this in Jesus name and please Lord bless these United States of America for the sake and the glory of Jesus again in whose name we pray Amen and amen.